we'll have fun with that. So uh, what's next? Uh, the MLB? Okay. MLB. Since we have anybody interested in baseball, we probably have some. If you like fantasy baseball like us, we ha we're going to throw out some tips for you guys because I think we got three good. We're going to give our secrets out. This You're going to give our fantasy secrets out? Because, I mean, we play fantasy baseball consistently every year, and we're usually top. We do very well in the fantasy baseball <laughs> leagues. We just have fun with it, and uh, but it is our best or our favorite sport <laughs> to do fantasy. So, so, let, so I guess if you do a fantasy baseball league, we're going to try to help you out on how to win your league and how to draft the best team possible. So let's... Um, let's start with drafting a team. With me personally, when I try to draft a team, it's like I love offensive heavy, offense, 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 pitching. Get later <laughs> rounds. I mean, you don't focus on pitching. I in the do first not focus. How many rounds? Probably first four rounds. First four, four rounds. Four or five rounds. I try pitch. to stay away from pitching. Unless there's somebody that's a no-brainer. I just unless it's like this guy I have to take because he didn't take him. But, like, I don't know. I've played the last couple of years, and you just get guys that play every day. I would rather have a guy that plays every day and gives you those consistent categories than a guy who plays once or twice a week. Maybe once or twice. Maybe once. Maybe twice a week. Yeah. And maybe gets you that one win. So, I mean, I love to get offensive heavy to start a good draft, start a good team. Angel, what's your strategy? Yeah, no, I agree with Giovanni. I, offense is the main category. If you can get good offensive players, most of the time, um, it's going to carry you to win. Like it, you could pick up a pitcher, and you could have a good offensive, I mean, pitching performance, and you could win a week in strikeouts or ERA just because they threw six shutout yeah. innings, or they, so, two games or they play, or they pitch two games that week. So it's more, it's more offense. So if you get good offensive players. Most likely, you're probably going to win the league. Gabby says, tip number one, pick your keepers on time. Throw them head <laughs> out. Throw, throw them yeah, some shade, throw some shade out. That is also in our league. That is also important. <laughs> or else you'll get you. <laughs> Talking to me? Yeah. Or <laughs> else. Because in the ESPN league, you didn't put your keepers yesterday. <laughs> or else you'll, like, you'll end up with two middle round picks that you don't want. <laughs> No, but um, yeah, but but we have fun with the league. I I, I agree. It, it changes from. It depends on where you're drafting. Obviously, we have a league where we have two keepers, so we're allowed to. You know, if you have two top star players, you keep two. You start off with two great players. I've had obviously Trout on my team for about a good uh, since he came up into the league. Um, so, so it's good that to have someone like him. Uh, but it's always good to add, and you, when you pick up. Good drop ads like you did, Joe, last year, picking up Judge right in front of me, who becomes a big time star, and you're able to keep it. Those the, are key moves that during the season the that, go, that go most, underrated. One of the most important things that you can do is pay attention, like every day. Yeah. Like set your lineup and always, always pay attention to what the who the, drops who, who drops who, and who is getting hot. Right. Because that could be a keeper for the next year. That's Obviously, um, that, that's true. I think that's the one gotta, thing that's underestimated. And you always got to pay attention to to um, rookies. Yeah, those top rookies that are coming out and when they're being called up. Um, it's, it's very true. My, my strategy can change from time to time. I like you. I like to pick offense first um, because it's harder to pick great offense later on where you can pick up some decent pitching. Later and some later rounds. That and if help you have you. better hitting and you have a Kershaw, pick keep the hitting. I say drop Kershaw, let him go to the draft. So you're saying like there's somebody in the league that has say they have Kershaw, Manny, Machado, and uh, Trey Turner. <laughs> yeah. drop, drop Trey Turner. Drop Kershaw. You say uh, drop Trey Turner. Drop, drop, drop the hitter. You don't drop the best pitcher in the league. Drop him. <laughs> you don't drop, drop the best pitcher yeah. in the league. He's gonna give you a, a two. One right, ERA every year. Okay, but if the rest of your pitching doesn't, you're not going to win the category bring it anyway. Down. But he can bring it down and bump your strikeouts so, up and bump your wins up. He's going to win more than he loses. Bro, right. if the rest of your pitching isn't good, then he's basically doesn't matter. 
I feel I like when I get pitching, bro. I like okay, to have one. That's the case, I like to have one good, not great pitcher who's consistent, and then pick up during the week who's starting here, who's starting here. I like to pick matchups more than just a starter because. But it's true. That's why I'd rather take what, what a guy who's saying. You know, how do you drop Kershaw? Kershaw should be a no doubt. When, 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 when he's almost guaranteeing you great. It, that's that's just a tough because tough Trey Turner decision. plays every day. He's gonna win you a category, no doubt. And stolen bases and every week. Five five so, tool. He's also I mean, home with Trey pieces. Turner's one category. Kershaw could win you two categories, three categories. Mm-hmm. Israel hey. Rivera from New Jersey said, hey. "No, you don't drop Kershaw." Could you really? Could he really win you three categories when he pitches two times a week? He probably could. He can win. He can give you wins. He can give you ERA. He can give you WHIP. And, All I'm and saying is that it comes category. down to you either have dominant pitching or you have good pitching. Like I feel like at the end of the day, but if you, you, if you have Kershaw, I feel like you have to have a great like you want more good starting pitching. Yeah. So I feel like if you're gonna go with Kershaw, then you have to draft a pitcher first because then it's like okay, I'm definitely going after these four categories, and I'm not about to lose these categories if someone else is having a bad week. Because why have Kershaw if you're just going to draft um, the rest of your team in offense? Like, why, I, I wouldn't want one Kershaw and then the rest bums. Like, it's not going to help your stats during the week. Because if you have, say, if you have four good starting pitchers and you have one excellent starting pitcher, it's like, I don't know. Well, I'd rather have a, a more balanced pitching staff. That's the key for me. I think it's balanced. You know, it, Last year, it, it, it again, it depends on how the draft goes. I like to go best available. Right? It's almost like best available. I hate to, to go with, all right, you got a top player there, but you need, right, um, you, you need, need to go, uh, you need a pitcher, and all of a sudden, you know, you're going to pick pitcher when there's someone that's much better than pitching sitting there. It, it becomes a tough choice. What do you do? Especially in the late rounds, your, your strategy kind of changes based on what your needs are over, you know, say, top players. He said, so, so you keep Sanchez over Kershaw. That's yeah, I probably would pitching. because yeah. catching is way harder position to get than starting pitching. Yeah, and that, and that goes, that also is another and part. At the end of the day, all these dudes can talk to me in the league and they can say, oh, this that's a terrible move. But, I mean, look where I've been the last couple of years and look where you've been. But it's not because you don't have to be no players. No, sh- no shade. But <laughs> look where I've been and look where you've been. It's not because you drafted yeah, those players, though. There, isn't it? Listen, okay, so you're. You didn't draft those players. You had Sanchez traded to you. Well, he's talking about a Yahoo. So. Yahoo League, with, Yahoo League was a little bit different, it's true. But, but Joe won the I Yahoo League. I drafted a lot of those Yahoo Angel guys. Angel was the. Uh, don't be mad. Uh, like, Joe was I mean, runner, I mean Angel was the runner up. And I was the uh, co-runner up third. So in Yahoo, we came out one, two, three, uh, the three of us here. I ended up winning the fantasy league in ESPN. Um, what do you is, guys? What do you guys think is the most important position that you want to focus on on a fantasy team? A shortstop or a catcher? It depends on what position for me. What position is the weakest? Probably. It all depends on which position because exactly. you got years like where second base is the weakest and you got really like two or three players that you want to pick that are available at second. After that, everyone's trash and you just wait till the end of the draft to hopefully pick someone that does well. So you try to focus on which is the weakest and make sure you get one of the top guys so you don't have to worry about right having that frustration all year long trying to fill in that spot. So it depends on which one is the weakest. If catching is the weakest, then you want to try to get one of the top three, four catchers because after that, you're, you're SOL. And let right. me say something. Get and let me give you another this. tip. Never fall in love with a player because, listen, you didn't sign these guys to 10-year contracts, all right? He did. He signed Trout to a lifetime yeah, contract. Yeah, listen, because if someone offers you a trade and, you're like, and you have guys that are like no no. No touchers. What are you talking right, about? Right, right. What are you talking about? They're untouchable. And if you if you have untouchables on your team and guys are like offering you some yeah. amazing I trades, agree. I would. I'm I'm with you. I agree that if everybody has a price. I believe everybody, everybody has, a, has price. a price. Even trap. It's harder, right? Because I I go. I don't want to trade because when you have a keeper 
their value skyrockets more than just a one for one trade. You got to make a trade that's going to make sense for my team, not only this year, but even down the road where I say, okay, that makes sense. I'm going to keep him now. It's going to make my team better now. And I got to keep her for next year that I'm good with. That's why Trout is harder to trade sometimes. You can give up two superstars that are, say, top 20 players, but not top 10. And then you go, eh, mm. they're okay, but I'm not, I'm not going to do that. And I've, I've made, some people have made good offers to me that I haven't taken. It's just harder for me to let go. It's just say, ne- never have someone that you would never trade. You just say, no, I'm never going to trade. Right. Gabby says he focuses on second base and shortstop. Um, second base is positions. getting deeper every year. Then he he chooses. Like. Yeah, second base is pretty deep. Um, shortstop is obviously with Machado and Didi and Correa and Lindor. You got some, you got some pretty good shortstop top, out there. Some great top in the top ten of shortstops. You have a lot of a lot of guys. hitters that can hit. Right story. And when there's how many teams in the league? We have twelve. And you have about ten great shortstops in the league. Yeah, ten. It's getting yeah. easier to have a shortstop. Yeah. Catcher is a position that's getting harder and harder when you have that's true. A Sanchez and a Posey just. Charging on, and no one else seems to be Well, you got the Cubs on. catcher, who is uh, yeah, Contreras. Is right yeah, he's here. pretty good. He's probably better offensively than Posey right now. Yeah, he had, he had a good year last year. And only gets better. So, yeah, I mean, that's 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 the strategy of, of right fantasy for me. It goes up and down every year. It changes. It just all depends on where you're at in the draft, what's available. If you're down in the draft, and, and you know, one – we know our Juan Garcet out there. I don't know if he's out there, but his strategy is he loves picking at the end of the draft because he likes to see how everybody picks offense, 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 offense. And if there's a great offensive player, he'll pick a great offensive player, but he'll also pick one of the top pitchers or he'll pick the two top pitchers. He loves to do that from time to now, time. Now, let me ask you guys this, since the Kershaw debate is probably the biggest one on this topic. If we had a draft and nobody had a keeper, where would Kershaw go? Top ten. Easy. Yes, he would go top, top ten. Top ten. Yeah. Top ten. So you wouldn't pick him over. He wouldn't be over Trout. He wouldn't be over Harper. Or he Altuve. wouldn't be over Harper. He wouldn't be over Altuve. That's, That's four guys. He wouldn't, right be over, he wouldn't be over guys that could hit for average, hit home runs, score runs, Mookie RBIs, Betts. and and can can steal. There's not too many of those. So you Charlie are, Blackman, I That's think probably would be like. Him. He might be at the at the end of the so, ten. So, so he'd be what around. He'd be, he'd be maybe at nine, top ten. twenty. Yeah, he'll be no. around the. T- he'll be the first top pitcher picked, but he'd be at the end. He would be the first pitcher picked, but that would be. Probably Do you guys 15, think that fifteen, um, sixteen? Kershaw would be one of the top ten picks. He'd go top I, ten for if sure. If everybody was in the draft, he he he'd go nine or ten. I don't know. There's a lot of great and you know players why? that you It's true, but he definitely would go either yeah, 10 or he would be the one Trout coming back at 11. Blackman because if I, had that, if I had that number Cedar 10 pick and, and I could pick one offense or one pitcher, I would pick. Kershaw would not go past 11. You know, I guess. I get, how many right. guys have we named? All right, I how many think, guys have we named? All right, Trout, like we said, Trout would go before him. He's a best player. Yeah, Trout, Altuve Harper, would go before Altuve. him. Altuve. Harper would go before him. Goldschmidt would go before him. Goldschmidt. That's four. Mookie Betts. Mookie Betts go Five. before. I can name about Votto. Votto would go before. Votto. What about Stanton? Stanton. What about Judge? Judge. Sanchez. Oh my God! That's I like... wouldn't pick Sanchez before Kershaw. No. 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 I think. I think. Oh, you're, you're I think you could get San- you could get Sanchez after him. You could get, you could get Kershaw could. and then Sanchez. Sanchez won't be top ten. Well, I would pick Sanchez over. There's ten better players. Israel than says he believes someone would pick him. In yeah, the because top that's 10. what they know. That's what they know. That's what people know. They he's know worth that, it, that he's worth it. That he's top. That he's the best pitcher. Well, that's the thing. But most people then again, will say, those people who who has Kershaw right now? Um, I believe Christian. Israel has Kershaw. How many times has Christian won the league? Lauren Wheatcraft, Joe Stark, <laughs> coaching. <laughs> he did it one year. <laughs> he did it one season. Stark coaching, and you'll have a real line team. <laughs> Listen, answer me this question: Who has Kershaw and has won the league? Nobody. Um, I think Chris, you know, I, I think Israel won. Mookie, didn't you win the league one year and you had Kershaw when you won it? I think he did. Yeah, he did win. He had he he won the league and he had Kershaw for a period of time before he gave the team to Chris. I just think there's better options at the end of the day. Well, it, you know, it's true uh, about that. When you're when you're when we're sitting it's, here it's hard to all these guys, it's true. There's, there's, like 10 or it's true. There's so many offensive well, players, but. What happens is there's gonna be somebody. And there's guys who. But but the whole point is there's gonna body there's gonna be somebody in the league that won't let Kershaw go by them. 
just because he's the best at that position. Hobby said, Hobby, uh, Gabby says, top 20. Kluber, Scherzer, Sale would make me think twice of wasting an early pick on Kershaw. And that's true. That's, that's the thought with a lot of people. Is be I'm not gonna right. I'm not gonna waste offensive pick, a top ten or even top twenty. And you see it happen. I'm picking Kershaw when I can pick two great offensive players and pick up a Sale, a Scherzer, or a Kluber, in the third round. So you've got a point. But I, you know, either way, somebody's gonna pick up Kershaw early on because it's just Kershaw. And then what'll happen is somebody will pick Kershaw. And then five picks later, someone's going to pick Scherzer or within the next five picks. Because, it always happens. Yeah, it you, goes downhill fast. You see someone pick a pitcher, like, oh, no, yeah, I, need, I don't have a pitcher. I need a pitcher. pitcher. Yeah. It's like, do, do your own thing. Like, yeah. Why are you rushing to get something that's who's going to pitch one day a week? Uh, there's it all the time. Oh, man, it's crazy. Closers are like that. You see someone pick up a closer, you're like, oh, shoot. There's only, yeah. there's only five more good ones left. <laughs> Let me go pick up a closer. <laughs> next five guys get the best closers. You're like, oh, we don't have a closer. It's so, true. The, 20th round, you're getting the Baltimore Orioles closer who's <laughs> never known. It's true. Now, do you want to go into um, a little bit of the spring training, or do yeah. you want to save that? No, we got time for spring training. Let's talk a little bit spring training. We still, I'm still amazed. You still got some guys, man, that are out there. I'm, I'm very curious to see who's going to step up and sign like Arietta. I was thinking the other day, man, that, I'd love to see the Yankees just go out and say, "Listen, we got a great team. We need to, we need to pick up one more pitcher. Let's go for it." Um, I, I I love to see Milwaukee go do it. But I think they need to go do it. They got enough talent. It's crazy enough, no one has picked why wouldn't you go do it? Um, the talks are that the Nationals, Nationals, the Nationals, the Nationals are looking at. Can you imagine that? Uh, if Scherzer, the Nationals, Strasburg, if the, Nationals, and Arietta, if the Nationals get Arietta, the Mets there should retire. No, nah, the Mets should retire. The, na- the Nationals, they will probably go to the they'll probably go to the World Series. Well, they've said that for for a year. They just keep on coming up short, even with the great players they got in the playoffs. It's just odd that they can't get past the first round. Um, and it's getting to their head, I believe, as they get into the playoffs. But yeah, I'm just curious who's going to pick up their head. I'd love to see the Mets step up and go get them. No, I mean. Never. They don't have money for them. No. They have the money. They have, the Mets have the money. They got money. Just a matter of them like going out and money. getting it. Yeah. Yeah. They have the money. But if they went out and got them and put him next to the Grom and Syndergaard. And I would say, good. oh, maybe they might win the East. Maybe. No, I, I think the Mets are going to be a they wild card team. They might be a wild no card team. What. They're going to be fighting for the wild Well, you're going to be crazy if you think that's... Because I don't think... No, Nats won 96, 97 games last year. Are the Mets going to win that right now? Listen, the if, the Mets, if the Mets... If Tim Tebow hits 25 home runs for the Mets, <laughs> then they'll make the wild card. <laughs> but until then, they're not going to make the wild card this year. That's another question. Do you think Tebow will ever play in the major leagues? Yeah, I think, so I think, he'll, I think he'll go up. He's there. impressive. Eventually, he's, he's he'll just get getting more impressive. I mean, I'm impressed with his progress. So, and man, he's just a beast. Yeah, he's he can good. run, he can hit, he, he, he plays hard. Man. Yeah, I mean, he 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 looks like a ball player. It's, it's not like he's looking at you know embarrassing. I mean, when he's hitting fourth for the Mets, it's like yeah, he, it's better. Dude, than he said he looked good today. What did he do today? I'm not sure. I know well, the other day he, he looks good every day. He's a beautiful he started human fourth being. against the Nats, and he was one for three. Yeah, yeah. Scherzer made him look pretty bad too. Yeah, you're, you're, you're talking about two times yeah. Cy Young. He's gonna make anybody. Makes a lot of people. Those 98. Bad. He makes Bryce Harper look bad. <laughs> so yeah. So that's the thing, and then you got you got Lance Lynn still out there. He's a good pitcher, and you got Cobb. Listen, so once area gets signed, going? once area gets signed, the Dominoes. We got three will weeks fall. before the season starts. Three weeks, twenty-one days. And the season starts, and you still got those pitchers. You still got hitters like Carlos Gonzalez, Mustakis, um, you it's know, Melky Cabrera's out there. You got a lot of talent still out there. Angel Garcet's still out there. Somebody, please come <laughs> sign this guy. That's right. That's right. He's no, available. He's taking come on. These counts are ridiculous. Nuri right. says that he smoked the ball, pulled a 93 <laughs> mile an hour down the line, but it went foul. <laughs> uh, that makes him look good. <laughs> Every major league uh, probably looks good one day. All right, well, who, did we say did we say Mike Mustakis is out there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Carl says that watch out for the Mets. They're gonna be a sleeper team. Oh uh, my God, I'm I'm snoozing then. I am I am completely Joe's dead asleep believer. on the Mets. Then Joe's not a believer on those Mets. I I I think the Mets could could have a good season too. I think they have enough pieces to to be. They're gonna fall to play short. Well, it, it's all gonna determine on those top pitchers. The Grom and Syndergaard could pl- pitch 
their caliber type pitching to stay healthy and Cespedes to stay healthy all year round. I think they're going to compete. I don't want to be a hater, but the Mets make me a hater, son. <laughs> all right, let's let's uh, um, let's make a prediction real quick on guys we really haven't talked about much, which Carlos Gonzalez. We know he's a good hitter. Man, we good know hitter. there's teams out there that could probably use a good bat, left-handed a bat. Left-handed bat. Let's, good out let's make a prediction right now. Where do you guys think he, he ends up going? You know, I'll just... One-year deal to Arizona. That's not bad. Because they did that lose J.D. Bad. Martinez, That's and true. that would be a great, really good pickup. That's... In field. I mean, I... It's like, when he gets to spring training, you're like, why haven't they signed yet? You're like, who is going to sign them and bring them to camp so late and obviously probably hurt some guys' feelings who think that you're going to have a starting job. And Yeah, that, that's what's going to happen in a lot of places because these, these training camps, what they're doing is evaluating to see if they're good with their team or do they need to start. Or they, I would they, say they he would go on a one-year deal to the Cubs. I, I hear the White Sox are looking at why White Sox but, be terrible. But I heard the White Sox are looking at Mustakis because they need a third baseman and Cargo, but they really don't need an outfielder. So they're probably would be more apt to get a Moustakis on their team than they would have called with Gonzalez because they don't need outfielders. But I, I just read something out there today about that. <laughs> Carl says you're a hater. That is so what it is. So, so, so where, do you, where do you think he goes? Joe said the Diamondbacks. Where do you, where do you think he goes? I don't know, man. I, I just really don't know where Carl Gonzalez is going to go. It's that thing where you just don't hear anything. You yeah, know, exactly. like, nothing, you know, nothing's my, coming. I have, no, yeah, I have no tips on where he's going to go. Uh, I, that's another guy we talked about. Be great for the Mets, right? Um, we did early on. We thought it'd be a great one-year sign for the Mets. Why not? It'd be a, Bruce it'd be a great one-year sign for anyone who's going to have a competitive year. That's right? what because I'm saying. he can be, he can have a monster year with every team, and he's going to look to have a monster year if he only signs a one-year contract. But I, I really, I'm, I really don't know or could see where he's going to sign. But I do like the idea of what you said with. With Arizona after losing JD, I would like him. I would like to see him maybe go to the Angels, and be that third outfielder there. They have too many outfielders already. Maybe even a DH spot. No. That would be another good place. They have too many. They, don't they have, have two. Spot. They have a good lineup. They have the Angels Jimmy Shucker. They, they have up there. They have Trout. They have Crone. Yeah, they have, they have a lot of outfielders. They, they, they have too many guys. Well, already. Crone played first, and then. Who else would be aged, so. Toledo says Cargo's 32, hit only 14 homers playing at Colorado, not worth a multi year deal. One year and done, and don't expect much. So yeah, I mean, he doesn't have much hope for Cargo. I, I think there's a lot of upside for Cargo. Um, I just, but I, I agree with young. him that you yeah. give him a one year deal and you just hope he has a great year because he's looking for a big contract year. If, the, if these guys. Were smart enough, they would just they would just want a one year deal. Because yeah. Because you think of all the free agents next year who are going to be getting paid. With Harper's going to be out there, Machado, Donaldson's going to be out there. Those are top three guys right That's there. Guy. We're probably going to get over a hundred million dollars yeah. for some team. Yeah. The team, the team that I think Carlos is going to go to, or that this team should try to get him, is the Blue Jays. Why not? They they haven't signed Jose Bautista back. Right. There's another get guy. get That's Jose get Jose Bautista back for one year. Right. Put Carlos them, put Gomez them both. went to the Rays recently, so yeah. Man, and they just signed Curtis ago. Granderson. Like, go put another left-handed bat in that lineup. Yeah. And that's the thing. That's the thing. People right now that when you look at the American League East with the Yankees and the Red Sox, people think, oh, they're gonna run away with it. But you go look at the Toronto and the Orioles lineups, and you're gonna be like. That's going to be some hard lineups to face. They still got some hitters up and down those lineups. Now, pitching is a different story. Toronto's obviously got good pitching. Orioles decent and pitching. They got good pitching. They got good pitching. They got decent pitching. Yeah. De- that's why I just they said. They got decent, decent pitching. Strowman, Strowman is good. They have um, um, they have the changeup guy that uh, pitched very well last year. What's his name? Go ahead. Marco Estrada. Estrada pitched very well. Name. But Estrada Garbage. pitched very well last year. Yeah, um, one year. He's like 28. It's like you can't rely on a 28-year-old who had a good year to end up. You can't rely on that. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. So looking at, you know, obviously checking to see what other free agents are available that hasn't signed yet. Um, again, the pitchers intrigue me. Like, I mean, that's really – Other than Michael Stockett, it's, it's really just who was – 
who was to your guy to you to you Toledo's guys? Toledo said that Rays threw away that four million dollars that they gave to the <laughs> Yeah, I don't understand. I didn't get that. I don't understand why you just got rid of everybody pretty much. And yeah, you know, that's just because they, they need something. Yeah. To be in Tampa, you need something. Like you're not. And Carlos Gomez is gonna be that something guy. He's, 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 he's fun to watch. Yeah, I give him that. He makes some cool plays sometimes. Right. So, <laughs> so you guys, who do you think right now? Who do you, what player do you think? Got the best deal. Like, what team do you think got the best player out of this whole? Um, Otani to the Angels. Yeah. He has looked great so far. Basically. What? That's another question about Otani. How in fantasy is he going to be used in fantasy? When you pick him no up, sense. can you use him as a hitter and a pitcher? They're going to have to. They're going to have to. He's going to hit and he's going to pitch. But then it's like, he's well, gonna then why more. can't pitchers get? Hitting stats on the National League, yeah, because, because they hit all the time too. It's weird because Otani's obviously gonna because he's not gonna well he's not gonna be a pitcher who hits. Will he's he take two roster off. spots? He has to be. Yeah, he has to be. A, he has to take that hitter role. He's got to be a DH or he's got to be a pitcher. When he pitches, he just pitches. When he doesn't pitch, he has to play a position. He would have to take two spots on your team if you logically think about it. Because you can't have a pitcher and a hitter mixed in one. That's why they obviously no, don't let the hitters the, the pitchers get the hitting category. But the thing is that Otani signed as both. He signed as a yeah. hitter and a pitcher. That's why I'm saying he would have to take two roster spots because it's basically having two players. Not really. Not if really. you get him, you, you get him. That's nope. the benefit that he has. He has the benefit that you have. He's, he's not, not going to take, getting he's not gonna take two roster spots, though. He's, he's one sure. player. He's one player. Right. He's one player, but, that's, but National League pitchers that hit good why can't they be counted? But they, but they, they don't look at him as they don't look at him as they pitch. Yeah, they he's don't gonna, look at him as they pitch. He's going to hit when he's not pitching. He's still it's, hit. it's like a disadvantage because to have him, it's basically having a hitter and a pitcher. Do you, do you get what I'm saying there? Yeah, no. We, that's we, why we I'm saying he probably have, have to take up two roster spots. I, I guarantee you he's going to be in the pitching on your bench and he's going to be able to be in your hitting. He's going to be available. Do you think he's going to. Do you, you guys think he's going to be a better pitcher or hitter? Pitcher, because his slider is nasty. So have you seen that thing? He's throwing frisbees up there in the <laughs> spring training, nice. and then he's also throwing 97, 98. It's crazy. Off the mound. Makes his man do what they do with the Yanks. That's, I'm so bitter about that. He's afraid. <laughs> he's afraid of the light, the limelight, New York. Yeah. No. Listen. He he signed with a good team. He's out there with Trout. Uh, you know, it's gonna be fun to watch him. Toledo says Otani will pitch one not in the lineup. He will DH on roster. For fantasy, DH pitcher. He's actually on the he's on the roster for both. He will be the team. only player listed as a DH and pitcher. So that's the benefit right there. Makes if, no you, sense. if you get him, he, if he's he's not going to pitch every day. So if you yeah. can put him to the lineup, then that's that's just the benefit of having him on your team. Is he is he is he that good of a hitter that he was pretty good? Is what I heard when yes. he was in Japan. So they say he's he said the he was the Babe Ruth, Ruth of Japan. And was Babe Ruth a better hitter? Or was he a better pitcher? Babe Ruth was garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Babe Ruth would strike out 180,000 times in the season right now. If he Pro- probably. If we're being honest, Babe Ruth probably wouldn't be that good nowadays. I hate, I absolutely hate when... Let's, let's talk about Babe Ruth. Let's, real quick. let's talk about Babe <laughs> Ruth. Let's real diss Babe Ruth real quick. <laughs> let's just diss him real quick. Because I hate when people say that he's the best baseball player of all time. Because, like, he, because, because he pitched and hit. I, and he I was don't good care. At both. I do not care. That he it was just an error. Right? Yeah, guys, yeah. all like this. They also they also pitched every game like they were like they were playing softball out there like they didn't care about those guys' arms. Yeah, they didn't, no doubt. They didn't In this era, I think Babe Ruth would be just as good. Oh my oh, god, that, that is, is ridiculous when you just think. That is no, it's not. He was a ball player. How many guys back then did you hear of that were throwing hundred miles an hour and had? Nasty, well, I think he I think he would throw very hard right now this in this era because if he grew up in this era like everybody else I think this we're not saying he did that you're just we're saying at, if Babe Ruth we took Babe Ruth from, from the, the 1900s the 1910s to 20s and we oh, put him man. on a team now he would probably be like Chris Davis <laughs> I would say Chris Davis <laughs> and Babe Ruth are the same if we put Chris Davis back when Babe Ruth played he would probably have 800 home runs. He's just not. It's just like not that good. Cause you look at the talent nowadays. It's like, do they really compare? Cause how many star pitchers did we hear about from that time? Yeah. At least no, as you true. can name. I mean, Cyber. we probably don't know. 
Because we How many games Cy Young won? Won over 500 games. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. He pitched every day. Pitch every How does that game. make sense to you? He has, he has fi- over 500 losses, too, oh. in his career. So what the? <laughs> you guys pitched every game. He was 500, 500. He was, he was like 501 <laughs> and 500 in his career. That doesn't make right. any sense. That's it doesn't make any sense. It's like so, pitchers that have a problem even getting to 200. How does his arm not so, fall So there's off. no way those guys were throwing... 100 miles an hour because if they were probably, their arms would fall probably off. 70 to 85 miles an hour. I would get I would guess they were throwing 60 to 70 miles an hour. It's like back in the 20s. Like literally like just lobbing it in there. And if you saw the motions that they Yeah, this it, it's like there's no way they're throwing that hard. All right. Well, Toledo says with Pomerantz hurt, will the Red Sox feel the pressure to get Arietta? Do do the Red Sox have money to get Arietta? Do they have any money? That's the question. They have the money. Do they have the do money? They have, do they, they like really the have the money? They're probably I'm, so far I don't think they will because they tax. have sale and price. I, you know, I don't know if they'll go. They might try to go after a Lynn and a Cobb, I think. If but we I look at their Arietta, salary tax. I think Arietta's out of their price range of what they're comfortable yeah. spending right now. I think Cobb or um, a Lynn would be yeah. more best suit for them. Probably a Cobb more than a Lynn. I don't think Lynn would play good there. I have that same question with the Yanks. Do the Yanks feel pressure of signing another starter? You know, if they feel CC or Tanaka is not going to cut it. I think they I don't think the Yankees get any uh, I think they need to though. No, I don't think they do. They like, I would already, love I would love to see them get an Arietta because I think when it comes to the playoffs. Not Arietta. I don't want to see Arietta. I'd love to. They're, just a waste of money. they're already they're already paying Stanton whatever amount of money he's getting every year thirty plus twenty five. Then they're paying Jacoby Ellsbury. He's not even playing twenty million. Yeah, they that's are the paying to, that. They, if we got rid of Jacoby Ellsbury, we would have we could you go to another pitcher. And then who else is getting mad money out there on the Yankees? Just about everyone you can think of, bro. Not Aaron no. Judge, not Gary Sanchez. Ch- Chapman signed a $100 million contract. Chapman's He's getting big, $20 million in a year, too. Yeah, Chapman's got a good deal. I don't, um, think, I don't think Yankees want to spend any more money. Even though they probably maybe could, but I don't they think they want to be under the salary, the, the salary tax. And they want to be under for next year, too, because they, you know, so all the superstars next year, that's going to be fun to talk about. Do they? Especially that you said they want to probably try to go get Manny Machado and put him at third base. Manny Machado's going to want over $100 million. Well, Manny Machado will be a shortstop. Well, the way the yeah. Yankees third baseman yeah. is starting to play in spring training. I don't Miguel Anuar is hitting some bombs. So, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. As I've said it before, let the kids play. Let Miguel Anuar play, let Torres play. And I think the Yankees are confident right now in their team. They know they can win with their team. Yeah. I, don't think they, I don't think they need yeah, any more Yeah, I don't think they people. want anyone else. I don't think they feel like they, they, they need would, anything. It would help. Yeah. No doubt about it, it would help, but I just don't think they need it. They don't need to spend the money. Yeah, very true. All right. I think that is... Um, That'll be it. I think that's all I have to say. Yeah, I think about we that. are done. Obviously, we're not going to talk NFL combines. I think it's boring, if you ask me. Hey, um, listen. Saquon Barkley. The kid with one arm that from UCF. One, one hand. Pretty hand one hand. Who is running the fastest 4 40. 4 3 8. As, I mean... I mean, I guess he has a little less weight on him. No, I'm just, I'm sorry. No, he, he, he man, it's phenomenal. <laughs> how, you know, how you ran a 4 3 40. Faster than Ezekiel Elliott, faster than Odell no, Beckham, he, faster kid, than. The kids impress him. I'm rooting for him. I hope, I hope he does very well in the NFL. But what, what about the running back who just bats tw- 29 reps for a running back? No, Bar- um, Antoine crazy. Barkley was faster Antoine. than any of those old, right? Any, any of the old. Um, Running backs like he ran faster than Zeke. He he did everything better than anybody else as a running back, jumping or whatever else. But he, we are, everybody knew he's he's gonna come in the league and press. It's just a matter of who's gonna pick him up. Um, and obviously the NFL came out and said that Des caught it. So thank you for that. Even yeah, we don't care. A lot of people don't think that uh, Des. I thought as a Cowboys fan. That if the Cowboys win that game, they, they would have went to the Super Bowl to play the Patriots. And people don't believe it, but I, here's why I believe that the Cowboys would have won and gone to the Super Bowl. They they were 8-0 going to that Green Bay game in the road. They went 8-0 on the road that year. They did not have a lose a one loss, which was amazing in itself. 
They were they were going to beat Green Bay on the road. They would have beat. And then they were going to Seattle the next week, and they had already beaten Seattle at, at Seattle. Seattle that same year, and not only beat them but dominated them. And I felt that was going to be an easier matchup for the Cowboys than it was for Green Bay. And I thought the Cowboys would have been in the Super Bowl with the Pats. So as a Cowboys fan, very frustrating to hear that. Now they say, oh, Des should have been a catch. Doesn't matter right now. Um, but most of most of my Cowboys fans know kind of ruined a, a really great year for the Cowboys that year. And I believe they would have, that would have been their ninth victory on the road and they would have been even more confident going to Seattle because they had already beaten them. But that's all we have to say about that. Yeah. <laughs> Frustrating. You still would have to beat the Eagles. One day, I would have had the Eagles. You mean the Patriots? Patriots, Sunny, in the Super Bowl. To be talking about. That was two years ago. I'm not talking about this year. I'm talking about this year. No, when Des caught, you know, when he dropped, they they said it was incomplete against. Ah, remember that? Yes, the catch rule. Yeah. Well, that just looks bad on again. Call says Machado to the Mets by the All Star break. That is a funny joke. Thank you for that. And on that note, who are they going to give? They don't have any Orioles. But on that note, I think we are ready yeah. to end this episode. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thanks um, for another great week here yeah. at Family Chats. Thank you all mm. for making it a fun hour, hour and a half that we jump on here. We appreciate the feedback. We appreciate you guys jumping in um, and interacting with us. We have a lot of fun here week to week. Look forward to it. Thank you guys for, for making this fun for me. And Keep spreading the word. Hit the share button on, on your Facebook. I forgot to mention that. Share this. Share this with, with all your friends and family. And give us feedback. If you have any ideas, questions, um, ideas of, of, of shows, something we need to do to the show to make it more fun, um, throw it our way. We're all, all ears to, to listen and obviously to grow and make this a lot more fun. Check us out on Instagram as our Instagram page continues to, to grow and continues to get um, a lot of cool feeds. It's a lot of fun to watch the Instagram pages on a day-to-day basis. Um, I think that's it, Joe. That's it. Um, real, real quick, I just want to say uh, praying for the Graziano family and the Marlins family. Uh, as we all know, my summer league coach passed away yesterday. Oh, I, um, I didn't know that. Sorry so uh, just sending out our prayers and condolences to their family, everybody I played with in the Marlins. So just praying for them. Just wanted to shout Pick out. Pick them up in prayer. Did not know that. I'm praying for peace for the family and everyone that knows them. So um, thanks for yeah. mentioning that. I didn't know that. Yeah. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in for our Week 9 podcast. Obviously, we want to keep doing this. And it's been a lot of fun. Um, we always have a great time doing this. Don't forget to check us out on YouTube um, at Family Chats. Helps out a lot with us. And we have a lot of fun stuff coming soon. So just keep checking in with us. Keep tuning in on Sunday nights. And that's all I got to say about that. Um, We'll be back (laughs) next week. NBA, getting closer to playoffs next week. Right? March Madness. We'll talk about the bracketology next Sunday. That'll be all next week. MLB getting closer to the season to start. We'll see if any of these lagging free agents fall in place somewhere. And again, have a fantastic week. God bless you. Appreciate you guys tuning in and sharing and um, being interactive with us. We really do appreciate it. Polito, on that note, Jordan's still the best. I agree. Disagree. Okay. Um, <laughs> Peace out. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe and obviously follow us on Instagram at Family Chats and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Family Chats, Chats underscore family. And just give us a lot of love. Thanks. Comment below what you think we should talk about next. Have a great week. Peace out. Bless you.